uh, Jeb Hensarling. Uh, Congress very good to have you. So much to get into Thanks, about Neil. your reaction to what Ron Johnson was just saying. Uh, he, he voted to get this out of the budget committee and fight another day for the things that are important to him, like how, these treatment of smaller companies, pastors, what have you. Uh, are you optimistic this passes the Senate? Oh, I'm very encouraged. And so, again, you know, I was concerned when my friend Ron Johnson had made his announcement. I was hoping that um, he would see the... Um, uh, the better in the uh, legislation, which clearly he did to further it, and uh, it will continue to be refined. But uh, I think this has a lot of momentum behind it. We got it out of the House. They now got it out of the Senate uh, Finance Committee. It has a lot of steam behind it, and it's so important uh, for the, this economy. I mean, as we know, under President Obama, we languished at about a one and a half to two percent GDP economy, which means that uh, paychecks uh, lagged, savings remained decimated, American dreams uh, were small and timid. And now we are on the precipice of a 3% uh, percent plus uh, economy uh, for years and years to come if we can get this passed. And I think we'll get it done, Neil. All right. Now, we, we talk about the, the revenues that the tax cuts could create. If they don't, one of the things the Senate is working on, sir, is this uh, provision that would raise taxes in the event the revenue doesn't pan out. How would you feel about that? I can't think of a worse way to tank the economy than to actually raise taxes. And so what we have, again, is not economic theory, but economic fact. You can look at the Reagan tax cuts, the Kennedy tax cuts. Frankly, you can go all the way back to the Coolidge tax cuts and find out that with pro-growth tax reform, you've actually created more So, so a provision tax like that, you, you sound like you would not support. Well, I always reserve the right to actually see what uh, what is being proposed. But yeah. conceptually, I think the idea that if you're having tough economic growth, uh, you know, uh, beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> Tax increases is probably not the way to to go. But I believe based upon history uh, that uh, we can have a three, three and a half percent uh, GDP growth. I mean, you know, in Reagan's uh, uh, tax reform package, I want to say that revenues were 19 percent greater when he left than when he came into office. The same thing is clearly uh, possible under President Trump. And so yeah. I, I wouldn't the want to no, support right. the a package. The revenues definitely come in. Both parties know how to spend it, that's for sure. But let me ask you, <laughs> sir, while I have bad. you here, Chairman, um, this move to, to get this through quickly, uh, one idea uh, bandied about was whatever the Senate comes up with, it's thrown back to you guys and you vote yay or nay on it. What do you think of that? Well, I don't think that's really how our democracy is supposed to work. And I think uh, that everybody in the House who's been elected by their constituency and their district needs to have their voice heard. And so if we remember our Civics 101, uh, they come up with a bill, we come up with a bill, and we go to conference. I expect us to go right. to conference. And we've got, we've got matters to work out. But you know what, Neil? There's a whole lot more uh, that is in common with these tax plans than there are uh, that separates us. And so I, I feel quite confident we can come together with a great pro-growth tax plan that's going to be greater economic growth, more jobs, bigger paychecks, and a very uh, uh, healthy economy. You know, while I have you here, Chairman, I know you got to go, but I am curious what you make of this Mick Mulvaney situation, the budget director who's running the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, because Leandra English, the acting director, thinks she's running it. Um, so you have two bosses uh, dictating policy to much of the financial industry, and no one knows who's on first here. Who is on first? Well, Mick Mulvaney is on first, so number one. Uh, even the own legal counsel, the legal counsel of the CFPB has said that Mick Mulvaney is the acting director. Uh, second of all, the Justice Department has opined that Mick Mulvaney is the acting director. The only circuit court that has ever opined on the issue, the very liberal non circuit, has said in this case, once again, the president gets to name his person as acting director, thus Mick Mulvaney yet again. This is a last desperate gasp uh, of uh, the the previous director who came in under a legal cloud, he will go out under a legal cloud. Uh, this is a waste of time. And the, but the problem is not so much who's running the CFPB. The problem is the CFPB. It is the single most powerful, unaccountable agency in the history of the republic. It tramples upon due process. It's All an right. affront to separation of powers. And frankly, it's hurting consumers. Whether you look at free checking getting cut in half, 
half, fewer credit card uh, offerings, uh, many automobile loans costing $500 more. This is an agency that absolutely has to be reformed, and it needs to be reformed statutorily, and that's what we have done, at least in the House, uh, through the Financial Choice Act. We would restructure it and make sure that it actually helps consumers by enforcing consumer law, not making it up and not running afoul and harming the greatest consumer protection so you, we've when ever it was known. being created real quickly, it sounded like you didn't be shut down. Well, I, we have roughly 20 major consumer financial protection laws on the books. We can yep. either have them enforced by, say, the Federal Trade Commission. They could be enforced by the prudential regulators of our financial uh, institutions. Or, frankly, I do see there is merit in having a singular institution enforce right. them. But they are there to enforce the law, and they'll not make it up. They're making it up. They're arrogant. They're part of the swamp. They have to be drained. All right, I'll put you down as a maybe on them. Um, <laughs> Chairman, it's a real pleasure having you. Thank you for taking the time. Anytime, Neil.